Hi, I am Architect Dulagan and I will be presenting about the economic factors that are strongly related to design decisions. So starting with economic context, it is the most difficult among the many factors the architect must consider because the uh, economic factors are often the most restrictive, pervasive, and difficult with which to work. It is restrictive because it limits the use of possible materials available, consequently affecting design and the type of construction. It even limits the resources from the design phase up to the implementation and evaluation phases of development. As such, it is uh, pervasive, affecting everything from the design decisions to the quality of construction and materials. And to make uh, things worse, we cannot control market values and its associated fluctuations. The architect should be responsive to the economic context that is so critical to the project's success. More rigor, knowledge, and accurate decisions are necessary to make development projects workable, successful, and uh, attractive. The architect must be aware that design solutions and decisions bear directly on the success of the building project. He must provide a responsive design solution in a limited time and within a strictly limited budget. Because economic factors are ubiquitous in building development, the phrase bottom line is often used to refer to the economic consequences of development and design decisions. The bottom line literally means the last line on a building's estimated operating statement, indicating the profit or loss remaining for the owner as in asking, what will adding a foundation do to the bottom line? Economic design parameters will be severely tightened on the one hand, but a larger number of variables will be available for manipulation. Thus, innovative solutions will be necessary to balance the constraints of time, cost, and quality. The National Association of Home Builders 2019 Construction Cost Survey shows that on average, the structural cost accounts to around 44% of the total construction cost, while the finishing cost is around 40%. But what are the cost factors that affects building design and ultimately its construction? The the rest of the slides present some of the cost-related factors affecting design. Changes in large-scale economic forces resulted in considerable changes in the parameters and difficulty of development. The developer and the architect should approach many of these factors in a cautious, deliberate manner for they seriously affect design decisions. The first of these categories in which economic factors are strongly related to design decisions are land factors and site planning. The cost of land is high and growing faster than any other factor in development. The developer then is required to use the land efficiently. When a suitable site has been located, the architect plays a key role in planning the site so it can be a feasible development. Many factors uh, should be balanced by the architect and developer in producing site plans, including the following. First of these land factors is highest and best used. Can the intensity of proposed development and its ancillary requirements be accommodated? physically and uh, statically on this site? Many assumptions about the project may be questioned and modified. A number of site planning alternatives are usually proposed and each is evaluated in terms of cost, function, and design considerations. In the photo, the shiny towering skyscrapers of Makati CBD contrast with the slums in its poorer 
neighborhood of shanty houses uh, built on the polluted river banks. Is this the highest and best use of water bodies and easements? Well, of course not. Can we build on it? Well, it depends on what type of development and who are the developers. But, of course, social issues have to be addressed first. While it may be possible to accommodate intensive development legally and physically, the negative design implications may be economically harmful if potential tenants or buyers are not receptive of the project. In the Morumbi neighborhood of Sao Paulo, South America, Paraisopolis at the uh, left part of the photo is a slum consisting of some 60,000 residents located right up against a lavish pool equipped apartments at the right. What are then the implications of this situation to the hotel guest? Of course, it is subjective. However, we see here the great divide between rich and poor, the socialist against the capitalist. At the heart of Seoul, South Korea, lies one of the world's greatest urban design projects, the Chunggichun River Linear Park, a green oasis in a concrete jungle. This inspiring urban renewal success underwent a uh, dramatic transformation from a traffic choke with uh, elevated freeway and a concrete paved waterway into a lush 3.6 mile long day lit stream corridor that attracts over 60,000 visitors daily. The restoration process has also provided a huge boost to local biodiversity and uh, catalyzed their economic development. Is this the highest and best use for such urban ecosystem? Well, the uh, success of the project speaks for itself. Second land factors is on parking. The type of parking is a key decision as well as the number of spaces to be provided, including its location and automobile and pedestrian circulations. Site planning is too often oriented to parking, but it is also an important factor in project cost and user acceptance. Just like in the case of retail development, as suggested by urban planner Kirby Snydman on his article, Why Retail Developers Like Parking Lots in Front, proponents of pedestrian-friendly design often advocate for retail parking lots to be placed in the rear, behind the uh, retail buildings and away from the roadways. Moving parking lots to the rear concentrates people and places along the street, creating an environment that is arguably more attractive and uh, better scaled for walkers and bicyclists, as shown on the uh, bottom photo. While this seems advantageous, retail developers are often opposed to this layout. The diagrams on the slide depict how the uh, Visibility of neighborhood retail center is decreased when parking is moved uh, to the back. Imagine that this center contains uh, several shops. In contrast, if parking is located at the front, more of the shops are visible to the driver and he or she can also or easily gauge if parking is available without pulling into the site. Additionally, moving parking behind structures makes it uh, less visible to passing traffic. This decreases the number of eyes on the street watching that parking lot. Putting the parking lot behind the store may increase the risk of harm to the customer who arrives by car by decreasing their uh, visibility from street and uh, pedestrian traffic. A greater risk, therefore, to the customers and, of course, more liability uh, for the owner and or the tenant of the site. Parking in front 
generally means more site access. Entryways are easy as a uh, curb cut and multiple routes can be laid out. In addition, the uh, back of retail structure can be dedicated as a service entrance or exit, separating service traffic from customer traffic. When structures are brought to the uh, front, they act as a barrier, often limiting the number of entryways. Also, when parking is in back, service access becomes limited. There are design solutions to these downsides, but they generally require additional cost. Locating retail structures behind parking makes it uh, easier to place preset designs, whereas fitting a structure to the curb often requires a custom design and therefore a custom layout of the store's interior. Even if the uh, retail store planogram were not an issue, custom designs usually add additional expense. For example, Curve-fitted retail often requires two entrances, one for the parking lot and one for pedestrians. This would require additional equipment, cashiers, and uh, security employees to service uh, both entrances. Thus, location is dependent on the project type in context. And for this case, for retail, uh, I believe we have to agree that it's much better that it is located in front. But in housing or uh, subdivision developments and uh, clustered uh, developments, it's better to follow the uh, Congress of New Urbanism, wherein walkable cities are preferred and therefore parking spaces are located at the rear. Third on the land factors is servicing. How much is needed? Where should it be located? In some buildings, uh, such as hospitals, servicing is a high priority factor and savings due to good planning can be significant. In the sample designed by KMD architects as shown on the slide, you would notice that number four, the service area is centralized providing ease of access to the distinct hospital zones. And this would greatly affect the design of uh, building utility systems and services, such as efficiency of the HVAC and equipment and material movement, as well as, of course, vehicular and pedestrian circulations. Another land factors are the amenities. The quality and image of the amenities may be as important an economic uh, factor to the user as cost. Um, what types, if any, should be included? Where should this be located? Uh, featured on the slide is the Hotel uh, Marques de Riscal, designed by Frank Giri, located in the uh, city of Wine. The hotel is juxtaposed amidst its uh, on-site amenities of vistas and uh, orchards as its main pull factor for guests. Aside, of course, from the uh, star architect's popularity and uh, radical deconstructivist designs, its uh, built amenities take advantage of its existing surrounding and includes the uh, winery plaza de las uh, cepas shown on the photo. The canopy's wedding recep reception uh, overlooking the graveyards and the uh, picturesque horizon, including a uh, purposefully designed glass corridor to further showcase the uh, site's best features, all of which providing added amenities for visitors in this uh, five-star hotel by Frank Giri. And lastly, on land factors is the consideration for design. Community and uh, neighborhood concerns such as materials, privacy, noise, and, and uh, even style should be addressed to, at the earliest stages of the development project. Community acceptance of the development as well as user acceptance is directly tied to design. 
The Torre de Manila in the background of Rizal Monument in Luneta is an example of a development with strong public resistance where various attempts to halt construction were made all throughout uh, from the years 2012 up to 2017 as it competes in the sightline for significance for this national landmark. And uh, this is uh, the Rizal Monument maintaining its dominance in the visual field without the uh, national photo bomber, the uh, Torre de Manila. So the vistas, the sight lines were maintained and provided uh, the dominance and the monumentality appropriate for a landmark. To continue with vistas, views should also be a consideration for design under land factors, with the best views demanding a premium rate. And here again, uh, we can see how Frank Geary manipulated the site to take advantage of the existing site conditions where every angle within and around the building providing optimal designs for vistas and sceneries. The view at the library terrace and the view at the uh, deluxe Giri room. So Frank Giri take uh, its time in trying to incorporate as, as much vistas as possible to the design of this hotel. Notwithstanding the aptness of decisions uh, related to land factors, judgments in the sphere of um, market factors can significantly affect the success of a development project. The architects design solutions at all levels from site, building, and unit, and even uh, correct choice of project signage can generate interest and enthusiasm in uh, potential tenants and users. Just like uh, most of Google headquarters around the world, Featured on the slide is Heather Wick Studio and Bjark Ingels Group collaboration on their original design proposal for the Google's new Mountain View campus. Well, knowledge of the types of users, their characteristics, their needs and desires, and the design implications of these attributes are the basis for solutions. The architect's role. Once a site and user group has been defined, consists of responding to the relationships between the physical form of the building and the needs of the user groups with respect to the following categories. Firstly, the provision of a distinct image for different user groups is part of our culture. The image of a development project, especially its facades and public places, provides strong cues to passers-by, users, and the uh, potential users of the building, as with the case of uh, Google's proposed Mountain View headquarters. Ingels uh, emphasizes on an image that the campus can't be a fortress that shuts away neighbors, that shuts away nature. It really has to be a neighborhood within the Mountain View community. This aspect of design is so sensitive that often the choice of architect is made on the basis of image alone. Thus, you would notice the Google have uh, choosed star architects by the likes of B.R. Ingels. Second, the amenities of various types offer a uh, direct appeal to specific user groups. The new Google Plex will create an escape from the parking lot uh, environment familiar to much of Silicon Valley. Roads will be designed for bikes and for pedestrians with an urban environment that promotes a lively, stimulating energy. With both the public and employees using the campus, Heatherwick hopes that it will help Google 
to keep their feet on the ground. Thirdly, the uh, building plan should be manipulated to respond to the user groups. As with the proposed Mountain View Google headquarters, the campus will be open to the public so as the local community can enjoy the open green spaces. The development will also include the uh, wildlife habitats and will restore waterways that feed water to the bay. And lastly, the units. Considering their size and shape, exposure and views, and finishes and equipment all affect the use and the rentability of such units. The proposed campus by Ingels and uh, Heatherwick is designed with a strong emphasis on the natural environment with office buildings contained uh, within large dome shape uh, greenhouses and abundant plant life are present both inside and out the third cost uh, related factors affecting design decisions are the building systems and construction processes the final product of the architect's work is a uh, set of detailed plans for putting the building together Construction is the architect's final concern and the development's single highest cost. The National Association of Home Builders, a 2019 construction cost survey, suggests that the total construction cost of a single-family home accounts to 61% of the total project cost. And the World Trade Center, as an example, uh, the Oculus by Santiago Calatrava is one controversial uh, project in terms of uh, cost and delay. It has a staggering cost of approximately $4 billion, twice of its initial estimated cost of uh, $2 billion. It was also completed with a 10-year delay from its original projected completion. The transportation have, have these issues and are associated with its extravagant design, necessitating, of course, specialized materials and construction systems. But, uh, of course, uh, we cannot argue with the sculptural aesthetics of Calatrava's expressionist architectural structures. Achieving project savings is important to the owner, thus the architect's role is critical. The architect's choices for construction systems and processes are based upon cost, time, and effect on the technical performance of the building. The evaluation of alternatives requires the architect to have a uh, comprehensive knowledge on building construction and materials established through experience and research on value engineering resulting to prioritization of quality materials and uh, specialized systems on important parts of the project while incorporating less uh, expensive materials and systems on other less significant elements. The decision may uh, change from project to project, of course, and as the cost of various materials change even from year to year. Lastly, on the cost-related factors, affecting design decisions are the life cycle cost factors and energy considerations. All the decisions made in the areas previously uh, mentioned, the land, site, marketing, and construction factors, will contribute to the success of the project, both initially and throughout its life for 30 or 40 or even over 100 years. Architectural decisions affect the building, uh, its users, and its owners throughout its useful life, including its environment and, by extension, the global ecosystem. Thus, a uh, life cycle analysis must be provided by the architect through the following considerations. Considerations on energy, maintenance and repair, flexibility and accommodation of change, functional cost, and tax considerations. In terms of energy, Initial designs and technical decisions uh, concerning orientation, perimeter, massing, exterior cladding, roof, insulation, mechanical equipment, controls, 
and lighting are just some of the areas that affect energy use. Energy cost is now a significant percentage of total operating cost and will continue to rise. Savings or losses can be critical to the uh, financial soundness of a project. For maintenance and repair, certain design solutions that may have low construction cost may also have short useful lives. Uh, this can result in extensive repair, eventual replacements, and tenant and owner discontent. On the other hand, higher initial costs can sometimes reduce or eliminate later replacement and repair. Third factor in life cycle and energy considerations are flexibility and accommodation of change. The uh, built-in flexibility at uh, considerably higher initial cost may pay for itself many times over during the life of the building. The architect's knowledge of the actual uh, experience of change in different functions for various building types can provide insights into the need for flexibility. On the other hand, flexib uh, flexibility or flexible solutions may be developed and never utilized, costing more than they ever will save. Featured on the slide, which uh, takes full advantage of modern data science capabilities and semi-automated uh, robotic technology currently deployed in factory settings around the world, is master's candidate Stanislas Chaulu from the Harvard Graduate School of Design imagines how today's new tech could help realize the long-time architectural ambition of creating flexible buildings capable of adapting to variable uses. Part of the uh, life cycle cost factors is functional cost. Initial design should take into account lifetime cost related to the functioning of the building. Some recent designs have included complex and expensive automatic delivery systems that require fewer employees for their operation. The high initial cost of these systems is recovered quickly during the payback period because of the savings in personal expenses. With the uh, Internet of Things and artificial intelligence technology expanding beyond the home to all types of buildings, Samsung Electronics is at the forefront of creating a new type of smart building.
And lastly, on life cycle cost is tax considerations. Tax seriously affect design decisions, often in an adverse way. Owners of investment property are allowed to depreciate their buildings over their useful lives to account to wear and tear on this structure. Owners anxious to make the most of their depreciation and tax shelter attempt to show that their buildings have shorter useful lives. The primary means of proving a shorter life is to indicate that the construction used was less than the usual quality or even of a poor quality. This results in the owner not encouraging quality in the building construction even though the building may house occupants for many times this period of ownership. The real property tax or RPT in the Philippines is 2% for Metro Manila and 1% for the provinces of the assessed uh, value of the property. So, if the Oculus was built in Makati and let's say its assessed fair market value is 4 billion pesos, not dollars, as, the, as with the, its original final construction cost, then its annual RPT is 64 million pesos just for the basic tax. How about the other state taxes imposed on properties? As a case study for the life cycle analysis, let's take a look at the edit tower designed by Hamza and Young Architects, which is a, uh, a paragon for ecological design in the tropics in Singapore. For energy considerations, the tower incorporates design features that includes photovoltaic panels providing around 40% of the building's energy needs. Moreover, 50% of the surface area of the tower will be wrapped uh, with uh, organic local vegetation integrated with passive architecture for natural ventilation, thus drastically lessening energy consumption for the building. In terms of maintenance and repair, sustainable materials and systems could be adapted for its construction. For flexibility, it is designed for adaptability for future changes with some of its walls and floors allowing possible transformations. On functional cost, the tower feature rainwater collection and integrated gray water system for both plant irrigation and toilet flushing with an estimated 55% self-sufficiency. And with almost new buildings, it surely will be equipped with smart building technologies as with that of Samsung. And for tax considerations, with its bioclimatic architecture, it is eligible for Singapore's Green Mark Incentive Schemes. And as a conclusion, every structure now should be developed through green designs or sustainable concepts, not just aiming for energy-efficient buildings, but of a structure that has their uh, system carefully interwoven into their ecological context throughout its existence, considering the client's objectives for cost, time, and quality. So, thank you, and God bless.